in the question number 16 it has been mentioned the length l of a copper rod is a linear function of its temperature means l is a linear function of p which is celsius temperature which is c what does that implies it simply means i can relate the relationship among l and c through a line or in short if i will take l to be the one y axis and c to be the x axis i can depict the relation between these two variables with the help of a line and in this question it has been given we have performed an experiment in which if length of the copper rod is going to be 124.942 then the temperature was 20 degrees celsius whereas the length was 125.134 where temperature on the celsius scale was 110 so you have to express l in terms of c so this time they are asking us to find out what will be what kind of the linear relationship among these two variables we are going to have so try, try to think l to be as your y axis like that's your y variable and c to be the x variable and i need to find out how these variables are related to each other well we can use the concept of the line to find out this relation isn't it you can assume that these points are basically going to lie on this line let us suppose this is my point a whose coordinates are l1 c1 and we have this point b whose coordinates are l2 c2 and we will try to depict what kind of relationship exists between l and c so just think what is the equation of line in general if you have to use two point form the equation of line was given by yes pavika what was the equation of line how to find the equation of line mam y minus y1 is equal to m uh, multiplied by x minus x1 where m is given by y2 minus y yeah. this is right so what we are going to do since we have to depict the relationship between l and c i will treat y to be l that is l minus l1 is equals to l2 minus l1 over c2 minus c1 and here c minus c1 okay so what will be the equation then you just have to substitute these values to get the result substitute it l will remain as it is l1 is 124.942 l2 is going to be 125.134 minus One two four point nine four two. In the denominator, we have hundred and ten minus twenty. On the other hand, this side C minus C one, which is twenty here. So by using this, we have to solve this equation. Find out what kind of relationship is going to exist between L and C. this is going to be l minus 124.942 is equals to 0.192 over 110 minus 20 is 
and here c minus 28 is If you want, you can do the cross multiplication 90L minus 0.192C minus 0.192C. This can be written as L is equals to simply, if you want, you can write like this. In fact, without multiplication can also be written as L is equals to 0.192 upon 90 c minus 20 plus 11244.78 because if you will shift it to this side this is what it will come or else it can be written as l is equals to 0.192 c plus 11244.78 Subtract 3.84 from there. So the answer is going to be 1240.94. Okay. Yes. All of you are getting the same equation here. Anishka? Say? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So here we get the relationship between two variables. So with the help of this, you can see that whenever we are going to have two quantities which are a linear function of each other, you can use the whole concept of straight lines to get their equations easily. Now let's do another question. This time the question says the owner of a mill store finds that he can sell 980 liters of milk each week at rupees 14 per liter. Means he assumes that if he will charge rupees 14 per liter, how many liters of milk will be sold? That is 980 liters. Okay. And then at rupees 116 per liter, he can sold 1 to 2 zero liters of milk each week. Now, assuming a linear relationship between selling price and demand. Now, here, these are basically the selling price. This is my demand here. According to the question, you have to find out how many liters could he sell weekly at rupees 17 per liter. If the selling price is 17 per liter, what will be the demand of this? So again, you can see that there is going to be a relation between demand and selling price. And in what manner they are going to be related? They are simply going to be a linear function of each other. So again, I will assume these two points are can be plotted on the graph where I will take demand on the y-axis and the selling price on the x-axis. Right? Here is going to be the demand function and here is the selling price. Now if we have to plot it, we can plot it like for one, SP1 is 14, the demand is 980. We have 980 liters of milk. Whereas, if I will take selling price to be rupees 16 per liter, the demand is 1220. So, first of all, the thing is you have to find the relationship between these two values. So, again, we can start with D minus D1 is equal to D2 minus D1 over selling price of 2 minus selling price of 1 
and here selling price of minus selling price of 1. So D minus 980 is equals to 1220 minus 980 over 16 minus 40. Whereas selling price is again SP only minus 60. That's it. So D minus 980 is equals to simply 00, zero as it is. 12 minus 8 is 4. 11 minus 9 is 2. 240 over 2 times selling price minus 60. 80 is equals to 129 selling price minus 120 times 16. How much it is? One nine two zero. So from here we get the relation is going to be D is equals to one twenty selling time selling price minus nine eighty. That's going to be negative nine forty. So this is how we can find out the demand for any value. Now. The selling price has been given 17 rupees per liter. Selling price is rupees 17 per liter. At that price, D is going to be 120 times 17 minus 940. What's the answer? How many liters is the demand here? What's the final answer? Clear? What it is? Eleven hundred liters. Yes, correct. So the demand of this function is simply eleven hundred liters. Again, with the help of this linear function, we can find the demand for any selling price. If somebody is asking you what will be the demand for selling price with these 20 per meter, then also it is going to be exactly the same thing. Okay? All right. If this is fine, let's come to the question number 18 then. In the question number 18, it has been seen that P whose coordinates are given by A comma B is the midpoint of the line segment joining between them to the axis. What does that mean? Here they said line segment between the axis. It is going to be the midpoint of the line segment between axis. So again, let's try to draw the graph and then we will see how to look into it. That's going to be quite easy. Suppose we have this and we are going to have a line which needs to be drawn like that. Okay. This is my line here. Now, what line segment they are asking or telling about here is this PQ line segment where this is P. No, I cannot take P since P is already taken in that question. Uh, let's take AB. Suppose this point is A and this point is B. We have this AB line segment and this point P is going to be the midpoint here. This point P is the midpoint whose coordinates are given by A comma B. Okay, this is going to be the midpoint of this line segment between the axes. And they're asking us to show that x upon a plus y over b is equals to 2. This is the equation we have to look for. This is what we have to prove. So let's just start. 
when for this case what we know here i don't know what are the coordinates of point a and what are the coordinates of point b so for simplicity all i know here is since a lies on the x axis what will be the form of the coordinates of a they are going to be h comma 0 this is in the form of h comma 0 and what about point b this is going to be in the form 0 comma k so we have h comma 0 0 comma k and the point is a comma b here so let's start doing this question what is given to us p is the midpoint of a if p is the midpoint of ab so the coordinates of p will satisfy the condition of they are going to set is it so let me start the presentation again is it visible yes ma'am okay so here p is the midpoint of the line ab so we are going to have a relationship among the coordinates of point p with the coordinates of ab by using the midpoint formula i know that this coordinate a is equal to what 0 plus h by 2 so from this expression i can get the value of h to be twice of a because value of h and k is not known to us similarly by using midpoint b is given by 0 plus k by 2 that is k will be twice of p so in simple words i got x to be the x intercept this came out to be twice of a and the y intercept is twice of by getting these x and intercept and the y intercept we can write down the equation of line here what is going to be the equation of line well i would like to stick to the intercept form yes dear can you tell me how to write down the, the intercept form of equation of line what will be the intercept form Mitoshmita, can you tell me the intercept form of the equation of line? Well, that's pretty simple. It's simply given by x over x intercept plus. y over y intercept equals to one. I'm not using small a and small b here because they have different meaning in this question. So from this condition, what will be my equation of line? X over twice of a plus y over twice of b is equals to one. Now can we take out one by two common from the denominators? Yes. Can we take it out? Yes, Natasha. That is correct. But Remember, whenever you have already these terms in your question, change the notations to avoid the confusion. So the intercept form will be x intercept is twice of a, y intercept is twice of b. Well, I can take out one by two common. This will become x over a plus y over b is equals to one here. This implies x over a plus y over b is equals to that is the equation of line and this is exactly what they were asking us to prove see how simple is that all i have to use here is the concept of the midpoint and the intercept form of the equation of line this question is an important one we need to mark it out okay is it clear to everyone any doubts Shubham, all clear? Okay. 
Okay, if this question is fine, let's move to the question number 19 then. This question number 19 says, point R, H, K divides a line segment between the axes. It is a kind of similar to this question only. It divides the segment between the axes, but this time it is not the midpoint. So let us draw a rough diagram. Make a habit of drawing a diagram to understand what kind of the equation they are asking for, what is the point and so on. Because it makes it easy to continue with. So let's draw the rough figure here. Suppose these are my x-axis and the y-axis. And according to the question, it has been given like this. Okay. We have this and they are saying they are going to be a point R whose coordinates are H comma K and it divides the line segment AB. Again, let's say this is A and this is B. This time in the ratio 1 is to 2. And we have to find the equation of the line AB. So let's start. But we know here that R divides AB in the ratio 1 is to 2. Right? So here, let us suppose the coordinates of A and B to be what? Again, they are lying on the x-axis and the y-axis. So we can say that let the coordinates of A and B be A comma 0 and 0 comma b. So let's write down the equation. This will become what? We can use the section formula to get the relationship between the coordinates of r and the a. So let's do that. For this purpose, I'll start by the coordinate of r. This is h, right? But before using that, who is going to tell me the section formula? Yes. Angelina, do you remember the section formula? What was the formula to get the coordinates of the point which divides the line in the given ratio? Anishka, do you remember? Yes, it was given by x is equals to m1 times x2 plus m2 times x1 over m1 plus m2. Similarly, y coordinate is given by m1 y2 plus m2 y1 over m1 plus m2. So here let us substitute the value. M1 will be taken as the first point that is M1 and this is 2. So 1 times X1 is going to be A and X2 coordinate is 0. And this will be 1 plus 2. But what can I write in place of X? This is actually known to us. X is what? That's H. So from this expression, I got h is equals to a by 3. This implies the value of a came out to be 3h. That is, the x-intercept is going to be 3h. Now let's come to the point y here. Point y is k. m1 is 1 again. y2. y2 is b. plus twice of y1. Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, sorry, my bad. It just did a miscalculation here. m1 times x2. x2 was 0 and this was 1. So the value of h came out to be different. My bad. 
this is going to be 1 times 0 and twice 2 times a. So this becomes 2 by 3 a. From this expression, the value of a came out to be 3 by 2 h. That is the value of a here. This is what we get in this part. On the other hand, if I will come to the other side, this will be 1 times b plus 2 times 0. And here, 1 plus 2. So, k is equals to b by 3. That means the value of b is equals to 3k. So, once we get the value of a and b, now that means they are basically the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So now can we write the equation of line? Yes, we can write it very easily. Since we have the x-intercept and the y-intercept, we can write down the equation. So let's write it. So this time, equation will be x over 3 by by 2 times h plus y over 3k equals to 1, which can be written as 2 upon 3x upon h plus y over 3k equals to 1. I can take out 3 common, taking out 1 by 3 common, we have this twice of x upon h plus y over k is equals to 1. That means we have the equation to be twice of x upon h plus y over k is equals to 3. So this gives us the equation of the line which is given by this formula. Simple as that. See? Okay. So how easy it is to find these equations? If intercepts are not given to us, this is how we have to continue. Okay. All right. Let's do one more question which is based on the linear relationship among the two variables. So let me start with this question. The question says, the Fahrenheit temperature and the absolute temperature K satisfy a linear equation means the relationship between the temperature in the Fahrenheit and in the Kelvin they can be represented through a linear expression given and some conditions have been given. What are these? Given that K is equals to 273 when F is going to be 32 and K is equals to 373 when the Fahrenheit is going to be 212. These points are given to us and I have to express K in terms of F and also find the value of F when K is 0. So first of all, we have to write down the re linear relationship between them. Okay. So the one way of doing this question is just like your above question only. You can take them to be the K1, F1 and K2, F2. By using the two-point form of the equation of a line, you can find the relationship among the two variables. And later on, you can also calculate what will be the value of F when K is 0. But I will like to do this question with alternate method also. You can also try the different way. What's that? Well, I, here I would like to use the concept of slope-intercept form. Why slope-intercept form? Well, because this can give me the answer very directly. So let's try looking at it. We know that according to the slope-intercept, it is given by y is equal to mx plus c. But this time, in place of y, I will use k is equal to m times Fahrenheit plus where m is going to be the slope and c is the point where it cuts the x-axis. Right? 
sorry, y axis. This is the y intercept. My bad. Now, by using the above expression, you can see that if I will take k1 and f1, this will be written as 273 is equal to 32 times f m plus c. On the other hand, 373 is equal to 212 times m plus c. These two value equations are given to us. Now here you can see that I have two unknown variables m and c. We need to get the value of them. But we can use the method of elimination to get these values very easily. How? I would like to subtract equation 1 from my equation 2. While doing this, 373 minus 273 will give me 100. 212 f m minus 32 m. How much it will be? One eighty. One eighty times m and c and c will get subtracted. So the advantage is I can clearly get the value of m very directly. Hundred over one eighty. That is five by nine. So the slope of this line is going to be 5 over 9. But we are not done here. We have to find the value of C also. What is going to be this constant? So to calculate C, we will find out what it is going to be for this purpose. Just use this. Any one of these equations can be used. I can use the first one from equation 1, solve. And let me know what will be the value of C. Y intercept. Yes, calculate the value of C here. Yes, C came out to be 2297 over 9. So we get the value of C. Yes, good. So finally, what can I write in place of the linear expression? We can write that K is equal to 5 by 9 times F plus 2297 by 9. That is, it can be written as I will write here. K is equals to 5 over 9 times F plus 2279 over 9. This is the expression from here to there. So we get this value of K. All you have to do now, if they are asking us what will be the value of F, if K is 0, you have to calculate. Put K is equals to 0 in the above expression. Put k is equals to 0. This will be 5 over 9f is equals to negative 2279 over 9. So by solving it out, we can have the value of f to be. It's going to be a negative number. Let me know in the comments what will be the final answer here. So that is still going to be the same only. No, 
Navika. Nine will get cancel out. Two to seven, nine seven, Anna. Yes, no problem. Yes, Dia, what will be the answer? Angelina, how much it is? Uh oh, see. This 9 and 9 will get cancelled. I'm left with negative 2297 over 5. Yes. If you will divide it by 4 times 20, 5 times 25, 9 times 45, 0.4. So the Fahrenheit temperature is going to be negative 459.4 degree to get the Kelvin value to be zero. So here, here it is how to continue. It's quite simple here. You just have to find out what is going to be the linear relationship. If you want, two point form is okay. But sometimes we can also use slope intercept form. It is quite convenient in finding the values of M and C. Here you can get the values of these very easily because after, on subtracting the two equations, constants can be deleted. That is, y-intercept can be eliminated very easily without even doing any multiplication or anything else. So that's why it is important. Okay? All right then. Well, let's keep till here only for today's session. In the next session, we are going to start with the reduction of these linear equations into the standard form.